everybody! Today we're going to learn how to go from this semi normalish girl person to this. I went with this voodoo vibe because I think it's one of the best types of characters to be that spooky pretty kind of thing and that's what I was looking for. It's a great look for beginners and the skull mask is super sweet and surprisingly easy to make via papier mache or as we would call it paper mache. I started the mask with an old plaster face cast I had, a newspaper ripped into strips and equal parts flour and water. Mix the flour and water together until you have a paste and start forming the skull by saturating the paper in the paste, removing the excess, and laying the strips in layers. You can mold the newspaper into shapes as you layer to form like the eye sockets, the nose, and forehead shape. Use a skull reference picture if you need to. I sure did. Make sure to let each layer of newspaper dry before adding more. Using some fake nails, I filed out some wicked fangs. I used cotton with the paste instead of newspaper for the bottom area so that I could mold the toothpicks easier and give the fangs a base that was easy to push in. And then I glued it in to make sure it was nice and secure after it was all dry. And then when the shape is where you want it, let it completely dry overnight. And then it's like wicked had yo. I then gessoed it, let it dry, and painted it with brown, yellow, and black paints, uh, acrylic. Mostly watered down a bit to make the color look more like bone staining rather than straight painting. After I was done painting it, I sprayed it with a glossy finish, set spray, and voila, school. Now moving on to the actual makeup. Using a white body paint, I lined in my necklace. I pretty much always use white paint to begin so I can make mistakes while shaping everything out and it's easy to erase and f Now I'm painting all the white base and you'll notice a snake around my neck. This is because my original vision included a snake around my neck. Crazy, right? But then after I painted it and I realized it was just not really jiving with the rest of my idea, so you'll see it completely disappear momentarily. Uh, every artist has those nope moments. This was a big nope. Of course, mine had to come during a contest entry, but hey, perseverance and stuff. Now using a gold metallic powder, I am coloring in the necklace. to the eye makeup. This character can have semi sloppy makeup that's half the fun. So starting with a smoky black color, I'm covering the eyelid. Blend out that line a bit, then adding a little white shadow on top of the eyelid. Uh, going back over the outside corners with an even darker, more saturated black glittery shadow. And now I'm using the black body paint to lightly shape out my brows. I wanted them to be a salt and pepper, kind of like the wig that I'll be wearing for this. And adding a little of the darker shadow onto the bottom lid and dragging it down to have that messy effect. Using the darker eyeshadows, I am adding all my contour lines. These will be in the same areas as usual, cheeks, nose, etc. But they will be a teensy bit exaggerated then blend like a madman. I repeat my apply blend process over and over until I'm satisfied. And back to the black paint, I am outlining the cracked eye shapes and adding the thin crack lines. Now 
Now I'm using the black to add depth and blend into the eye makeup. Adding a small amount of shadow onto the cracks will allow the highlights I add later to pop out, especially against the white skin. The white highlight on top of white skin, you need a little something for differentiation. Now I'm adding glitter into the eye area, focusing it mostly on the bottom lid. And adding that highlight on the cracks, you can see how it makes them look more dimensional and raised up. It's super cool. Using black paint slightly watered down on a brush, I flick over the eye areas to create a cool texture. That you can clean up the dots that end up in the wrong place, so no worries about that. And then I wanted to turn it up to 11, so I added more black paint streaming from the eye area. Using the bottom of a brush, I added the dots to my forehead and chin. So these shoulders are deceptively simple to do actually. Using black paint, make short lines all over the place, try not to make them too uniform. Layer them until they look solid enough and then you'll add a few highlighting white streaks over top of the dried black and they end up looking very feathery or fur-like and I, I love it, love it. Now I'm using small amounts of black paint and dark eyeshadow and adding shadows to the areas like where the necklace and skin meet. Always think about where your shadows should go and include them. They make things more realistic and interesting to look at, in my opinion. The necklace is ridged and round, so the shadows will be under every ring, one large patch on each side, and one in the center. And then the highlight to the shiny gold will be in between in the front. This helps achieve the illusion that this fairly flat picture is actually round. And I always like to give my sexy characters a little emphasized boobage. It only makes sense to match the exaggerated contours everywhere else, and they're fun. Using the black paint, I add the top. Using white paint, I add some clothing wrinkles and start blending that out. Then I add more black into the deep spots of the wrinkles. This method leaves me with three colors in the top, black, gray, and white. The result is more dimension in the clothes, which always looks killer. Using a different brush bottom, I add all the dots on my arms and chest. I like that these dots were messier, so I just left them like that. And finally the lips. I always leave them till towards the end so I can keep eating and beveraging while I work. Priorities, people. 
I shaped them out with a pencil, that was the darkest one I had, then put on my lip primer and black paint. I added a touch of this gorgeous purpley highlighter because it's amazing. Then using my fingers, I just wipe the bottom corners of my lips downwards to keep that messy vibe going. And then just added some white dots on the lips. I wanted her to be a little creepier, so I pulled out the corner lines a bit to play on the clown phobia crowd while I was at it. You're welcome. And as everyone knows, when you're playing with black magic and voodoo, brushing your teeth is way down on your to-do list. So add that black tooth stain. Come here, and give us a little smoocher. Let it dry. And added a little twine on the hand. And hold on to your hats, folks. Here's where it gets real. Contacts in. For your own safety, it is recommended that contacts are inserted before you do all the eye makeup, but I am just not a fan of them and couldn't handle staring into these lights the whole time with them in, so I usually wait and just exercise extreme caution while I put them in. But don't be like me, kids. Be safe. And now I'm gluing on the nails. I like to call them the Dear God Why nails. They're very sharp. Poke your eye out. And after they were on, I painted them black and brought the paint down the finger, kind of like a cone dip effect. Wig and mascara on before I do the other hand, or it would have been impossible. And this perfect ring I found for this look. It feels right. After the other hand is finished and the hat is on, we are donezo! Voodoo Mistress lives to steal your hair, but never your toothpaste. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, make sure to like, comment, and share. You can also subscribe for more tutorial fun in the future. Be a cool kid. Hit subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook for extra looks, pictures, and previews. See you later, gals and ghouls.